Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 through chapter 10, verse 4. The Reverend Dr. Kevin Wilson is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. Now our reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 through 10, 5. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we are imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest the preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. I want you to know, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea that all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the same spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, most of them, with most of them God was not pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Here ends our reading. God has created men and women with significant differences, and some subtle differences. And I think one of the subtle differences is seen in conversations. In a conversation, men are much more likely to simply not use any type of transition between topics. We just keep rolling. Women use those transitions. I'm kind of watching, and people are kind of looking at me here going, okay, where is he headed with this? But I see the ladies are smiling. You know why? Because I'm right. Men, we don't use transitions, right? Because the ladies know that talking to men all of your lives has been a lot like going on a road trip without GPS, right, without without a smartphone. You know you're going to get to the end of the conversation, not sure how you got there, right? But men, if you want to know if you've experienced this, and I certainly have, think about the times in talking to your wife, your mother, your sister, where in the middle of a conversation she stopped speaking and just looked at you like this. You know why? Because you've lost her, because we don't use transitions. We just keep pushing through. I thought about this with our text today because the lectionary is put together, decided to put together the end of 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and the start of chapter 10. And so as I was reading, I so badly wanted to look up and see if there's any of those looks on your faces, men and women, that kind of, because there is no transition. It just goes. For one moment, the Christian life is like training as an Olympic athlete, and the next moment is this esoteric view of the exodus. Now. I'm not sure why that was done, but I am confident that God can strengthen our faith through it. And here's how. It's true. The Christian life is like training for the Olympics. Right? We know God's instructions about that life. Uh, the Apostle Peter in his first epistle, he's quoting the Lord from the Old Testament and says, all right, here's God's expectation of his people. Be holy as I am holy. That's God's expectation. Our Lord himself giving instruction on how to live on a daily basis. Summarize the Ten Commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's the standard that's been set. So yes, we look at the Christian life and we have to train as if we were athletes, Olympic athletes, because that's the standard. That's the expectation of holiness, of obedience, of love for God and for our neighbor. Here's the problem. The harder we train, the more we try to live that perfect life, the holiness and obedience to God, the more we push ourselves with the sacrifice and discipline that an athlete at that level gives, the more we recognize (laughs) that we fall short, that we cannot attend that, no matter how hard we work out in the faith. We can't reach it. The more we push ourselves and drive ourselves for holiness, the more we understand our lack of holiness and our sinfulness. The more we drive ourselves to love God and love our neighbor and give everything we can to our neighbor, the more we're selfish we see ourselves in the mirror. The more we drive at it, the more we feel that. And so, yes, if we keep doing this, if we keep beating ourselves up because we can't reach that level, even though we're trying to train the best we can as if we're the Olympic athlete, there is a risk of despair. There is a risk of hardening our hearts. The very thing the psalmist said. The psalmist said, do not harden your hearts like they did, the children of Israel did. But man, trying to live to the standard. And I think that's why 
there's a hard pivot in our reading today. And it goes from what we must do to what God has done. Right? I mean, God is the one who led his people out of Israel, Egypt. He took the Israelites, and yes, he led them underneath that cloud, and he led them through the sea. In fact, the reference here is we're told by the apostle that they were baptized, baptized in the water and the sea. Certain irony in that, right? They were baptized without getting wet. Why? Because God made part of the sea and made it dry land. But God was delivering them through that. They were baptized into it in the sense that God delivered them through that water. And then in the wilderness, when they were lost, God provided spiritual food. It says it's spiritual food. It is spiritual. Those who like to receive spiritual food because it was a gift from God that they apprehended by faith. But it also was tangible and real. It was real quail, real manna. They drank real water. So as we're listening to this, as the children of God who understand we can't reach the standard that was set, we are reminded of baptism as well. It's one reason that term's used here, I'm certain. We are reminded of our own baptisms because that is a spiritual act. It's a gift of God. It uses something tangible and real water. There's promises with that baptism to forgive sins, create faith and dwelling of the Holy Spirit. All of that's given to us. Why? Because we can't meet that standard. And yes, we also receive a spiritual meal. And I will say the Lord's Supper is a spiritual meal. Why? It's a gift of God. God has given us this wonderful gift. But it's more than just a spiritual gift that we you know, apprehend by faith. It's also real and tangible. Real body, real blood. In, with, and under. Real butt, bread, real wine. All of this combined. One reason God has given us this gift is our propensity as God's people to beat ourselves up when we can't live up to that standard. So that we will not reach the point of despair, so we will not reach the point where we might harden our hearts. God gives these wonderful gifts, including the Lord's Supper, to strengthen us, to encourage us, yes, to forgive our sins, to prevent that from happening. So I like the fact that there's no transition here, that it goes straight from what we must do to what God has done because of the comfort it provides us. We see that God provides even today the baptism of the Lord's Supper. Amen. The peace of God passes all human understanding be yours in Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us for Chapel. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org slash chapel.